Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 for the first in what's going to be a slightly different uh, week's worth of updates because, well, this week is going to be a little bit weird. Uh, but today's um, big announcement is that in the uh, in the last stream, or in the, in the in the first stream this week, which will actually be the stream before last, when you see this, oh dear, I've gone cross-eyed, um, is that I managed to achieve, um, I managed to start making Astro Science 4. Now, we're not actually making them right now, but there's quite a lot of them on the belt here, so I think I'm, um, I feel quite justified in saying that. Uh, and so, yes, Astro Science 4 is, is a sort of culmination of quite a lot of work. Um, and and the, the main thing that's been, that we've obviously been waiting for for that one is the, is the catalogues, because you need a catalogue to make each of the different tiers of science, and then you combine it with some of these other, um, other special ingredients that are coming through. And we ran out of the sticks because we use them up in larger quantities, but, you know, that's, that's okay. We've taken some steps to deal with that. So, yes, making the Astro Science 4. Well, I touched on this quite a bit in the in the last videos, in the last few videos, in fact, because it's been a little bit of a process to get here. And we've got, now we can see down here, we've got all these various different tiers of machines, all of them um, being severely beaconed because they are, they're, they're, they're quite, making all these things is quite time consuming, so I wanted to make them run nice and quickly. Although I did put some efficiency modules in these particle colliders because I think they use quite a lot of the power. And even, so, even with that, they're, they're, even with all these speed modules they've got, they're still running kind of slowly. They're not producing these um, black hole datas as fast as I would like them to. So up here, it looks like we're only running at about roughly a third of the speed I want to. And I feel like I should come in and move these machines a bit closer together. But for now, we won't worry about that. This is now making the Tier 4 um, Astro Science catalogues. And they're not coming out at a, at a fantastic rate, but they're being generated reasonably quickly. And the, the big thing that's changed to allow me to start making those is this asteroid pro asteroid probe data that's coming in over here. And I talked about this in the last video a bit as well, because up here we now have these two spaceships that will fly off to re remote parts, loaded up with the appropriate types of probes and also with these probe launch rockets. And then they, they will fly out, they fly out in this case to an asteroid belt where they launch these rockets. So if we look out in Kalidas Asteroid Belt 1, we can see this space station over here that I've built up. It's got a little protective thing for the, for uh, preventing any any meteor impacts here. But then over here we've got a um, uh, a load of solar to power it, and then we've got this uh, probe rocket launch silo here as well. And so the idea is the spaceship turns up, it parks in this gap here in the middle. It'll unload the meteor defense ammo over here, so there should always be lots and lots of that. Except I say always, these ships aren't actually going to come out here all that often because it just produces a lot of the data cards. They will then unload ten probe rockets and ten um, probes along this belt here. They'll be fed into the launcher here. The launcher will launch them and the probes will turn into, each one turns into a thousand data cards of the relevant type. And those that get, then get poured out down this belt, put back into the ship, which flies back to Norvis orbit, and then unloads them down this belt. So this means that each time the ship flies out, it'll cut one and comes back again, it'll bring 10,000 of these data cards with it. Now I did send it off a little bit early, so there's only uh, only 1.4 thousand left in it. I think I got about 5,000 when I sent it out the first time. This one uh, lasted a little bit longer before it went, got a little bit more in it. So this one's got 6,000, I think it probably had about 8,000 in there before. So we've got a lot of these to work through. It's going to be a long time till we need to send the spaceship out again. But a lot of the science we're going to be doing later on is going to churn through quite a lot of these um, Astro 4 science packs, so I think it is worth having quite a lot of um, having a lot of these available. Now, in the future, I might decide that actually calling in for ten of each of these things is a bit excessive, and I, and, and I should actually be sending it out with only five, or maybe even only three. And the main reason to consider that is partly because of the the effort of making the probes, but also because we don't want to run out of the meteor defense ammunition out there, because then that that outpost might get pummeled by meteors, it might stop working, it might require a load of hands-on tweaking to make it to get it up and working again so it's potentially problematic if this stays here for too long without going out but it'll probably be fine so yeah those flow off down here and I, I touched on last time that the problem we were running into with making all these and the problem we still have in fact is that making each one of these probes requires a thousand um, blank data cards because those blank data cards all get turned into non-blank data cards, data cards with actual, you know, data on them. And um, and so you need a conservation of data cards. You need to ship out a thousand of them in your in your probe in order to get a thousand of them out onto the um, onto the belts here to put into the science system. And we're still a bit short of those. And suddenly having put this in where it goes, uh, yes, I would like uh, 20,000 uh, data card, blank data cards, please. Oh, and then another 20,000 so we can refill the ship so it's ready to go back out again. Uh, 40,000 data cards is a pretty big undertaking. And yes, we have this system over here that produces them from the uh, from the red circuits and from the, the, the data substrates that we are eternally short of. But it, it, it is a struggle to produce this sort of rate of data, of data cards. I mean, you can see we've, we clearly had a, a train come up that unloaded a huge number of the, uh, the data card substrates, and yet we've only had 
from about here on the belt to, and it's already run out over here. So, yeah, we're, we're getting through crazy, crazy quantities of, of stuff in order to make all of that. Um, maybe this will be enough to fill this up so a train will go again. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Uh, hopefully everywhere else is okay for uh, data cards at the moment, and we're, going to, and we're going to be able to churn them through at, the, at, at, at a suitable rate. But, yeah, it's a little bit problematic at the moment, should we say. But the reason it's problematic is because we ran out of red circuits a little while back because there was a station that was named wrongly. So it's quite possible that if we just keep the system running then we're going to be absolutely fine. The the um, the steady state is going to be isn't going to give us any problems, even when we suddenly request a large number from it. It's only when we have a crisis and then have to go around and try and fill up all the buffers again. So over here, for example, there'll be a, yeah, there's a blank data card drop here. Okay, this has 6.7 thousand in it, so the station's turned off. Over here, yeah, we've got another blank data card drop here, and this one is this one is is is, is low. In fact, it's, in fact, it's worse than low. It's completely run out. So we don't have any more data cards to make more astro science. I say we don't have any. There's there's some on the belt down here, but it's quite possible that systems up here are going to be needing them and therefore we're going to run into problems. Now, it looks like there's a fair number on the belt. Maybe it'll be all right. It's kind of hard to tell at this stage. Um, we, 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 sh we shall see, but I might have to go in and manually play with it or just or just be patient. So there are, pro there are potential problems there. I went through exactly the same process with, for the um, for the solar data, and this is, this works in exactly the same way. You make a spaceship, you fill it up with um, pro with solar probes and probe rockets, then you send it off to um, orbit around a sun, and from here we can now place down in exactly the same way. I placed down a, a probe rocket launch system here. It can launch out the rockets. You get with with the probes in them. You get loads of data out. You feed it into the spaceship, and you can bring it back. Things are a little bit different over here. I've not bothered putting down a patch of solar because we already have enormous quantities of solar. We've got 3,800 of them apparently. Uh, that's producing 43 gigawatts and we uh, and, and a bit, and this is using almost none. Um, but in the same way, I've also got it unloading the um, the meteor defense ammunition into this chest here, where we've got 900 of them. So yeah, that'll keep these guns happy for a while. We should we should, we, should, we should be reasonably okay. But again, I don't know how often we're going to be shipping the ships out here uh, in order to, to, to do the to do the run the loop round. So we might start to run out of these a little bit. However, now that I've started making those, they are, they are now pouring out of the spaceship down here. This means that Tristan's energy science is now actually working. So we've got these pouring in down here, joining in, in along here. And okay, it's not working quickly. He needs to put in a lot more machines. But you know, that's that's just that's just how Factorio is. And by the time you see this, he probably will have done. So um, check out yesterday's stream. Um, <laughs> it feels weird to say that, uh, but yes, he's got all of the, now got all the data cards coming in 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 quantities, just small quantities, and that's able to make the energy science four packs, which can then be fed up over all the way along here, put into the train as usual. You've seen all of this before, and he's got actually he's got 150, 108, 180 in this one, presumably the same in the other one. So he's, yeah, he's made almost almost 400 of them so far, so it's not going too badly. Uh, we're producing; they are being produced steadily, and, uh, and and this should should generally be okay. We'll uh, we'll we'll see how he gets on with that next time. But I don't want to talk about this too much because it's not quite finished at this point. In fact, I probably shouldn't even be talking about it. Something I can talk about related to what Tristan's been up to is all of the core mining and core mining adjacent stuff that he's been up to down on Norvis. And so the first part of that is it's quite simple. I was talking about this in the last video. It was that we needed we needed more trains along here, and we need we need a faster system of passive for passing the uh, passing the trains through. So he's done some improvements down here. He's put he's put these stations in along here, which I believe don't do anything. They just make the line seem longer, and I'll talk about why in a moment. And then up here. Yes, he's got. Well, he's got some some extra signals in here. We're unloading, so we're unloading the core chunks fairly fast. We've got lots of trains in here queuing up, ready to unload. This should keep the system ticking over quite nicely up here and keep the core chunks coming in. Although I did notice there was a bit of a gap on the belt, so maybe it's not quite as good as as, as, as I was thinking. But that's that's the the, uh, the relatively simple end of the um, improving the uh, the core mining. Um, the next thing is in this in this area. There was we had a problem before where so you remember last week I talked about how we put how we put this bypass in that goes around the outside of the core mining process and means that any trains that are going due north can follow this route, whereas the trains that are coming through to drop off the junk can follow this route, and that means that the only place where they where uh, there's any merging going on is any trains that are coming out either from the core mining or from any of the other uh, stations in the middle that are trying to go north. And that so essentially it's to keep the trains that are just trying to go north in order to get you know to the north uh, separate from the junk trains that will all be turning around like that one and heading back south again. And that significantly reduces the congestion that happens up here at the top by essentially splitting out the trains that are guaranteed to be going back south again and the ones that are just don't need to stop here and are carrying on north. Uh, how However, it didn't work. 
uh, the train still reckoned that going through going through these um, these these buffer station area in the middle and looping around here was shorter and quicker than going around the outside the, the outside route. And to be fair, they're not wrong. So in order to force that, Tristan's put in these row of stations all the way along here, which no train is ever going to actually stop at. You see that one just tr drove straight through it without paying any attention to it. However, it does mean that the Factorio train routing algorithm now considers this, this route, th these lines that go through the middle of here to be really quite long, because I think that adds an extra thousand onto the, onto the uh, distance of, um, that the train considers it to be. And so therefore, this route around the outside is now significantly shorter. And so trains that are just trying to head off from the south to the north north will go around the outside as we want them to and that, and as I say that reduces the congestion quite considerably. I also put in a little bit in here saying just no just, just to make sure that nobody comes along and says oh hey there's a break in the track here let's fix that because they just won't be they won't, won't be able to now and it now looks very very deliberate rather than just something that's got destroyed or accidentally deleted or anything like that. <laughs> On the subject of core mining again, Tristan has put in some extra core mines again and again, so we've got loads of them now. He's also put some alarms in on some of the more distant ones, like uh, like this one down here. We've got an alarm here that will go off and alert us with a signal that's down here that says... Well, it doesn't say anything at the moment, so obviously this isn't this isn't full. Uh, it, will, it will give us an alert if this warehouse gets more than... 10,000 core chunks in it because if it gets to 10,000 that's almost double what a train can carry and so a train really should have arrived by then and so it'll give us a warning that we have rather a lot of cores available on Norvis they should be being picked up so maybe you know maybe we need another another train um, because uh, yeah the, the problem was that we didn't have enough of them uh, they weren't emptying the mines fast enough and uh, yeah they were all just getting stuck up and then and, and so the uh, yeah some of some of the mines weren't getting used properly and it did also meant that sometimes we didn't have enough core trains here to keep the system quite as full as we wanted to so this this is now putting a little bit of extra load on the core mining uh, on the core core mines allowing us to bring more chunks through and therefore process out pull out more of these resources Another thing that's quite satisfying, hopefully quite satisfying, is if we, if we look in this, yes, if we look in this warehouse, this was completely full in the last video. We ha we're having, the junk was being loaded into it basically faster than we could deal with it. Now it's down to, there's not a huge amount in here. We can get rid of a lot of this stuff. I don't know what all these barrels are, why all these barrels are just sitting, oh right, okay. Yes, this is another thing that Tristan noticed. The, uh, the, the uh, unbarreling process over here, um, it, the, the barrel crushing process can't keep up with the unbarreling process essentially. So yes, we have a warehouse. Yes, the warehouse is full of empty barrels. Uh, those are being gradually crushed, but only gradually. That's something that's something that should be a relatively easy fix, but in the meantime, it just means we're going to fill this warehouse over here up with barrels, and that's going to be a little bit silly. The next thing to look at is the rough data card substrate production. And this is another thing down here on Norvis. It's being made here in massive quantities by all these machines, poured down a belt, put into a train, and taken up to space from there. We've actually got two different generations of the uh, production going here, over here. We've got these old machines up here, uh, which are running, they're running very, very slowly now. They're producing a, ge a very gentle trickle. And these ones over here, which I built as a, as, a, as a major upgrade to it, and they're easily capable of filling the belt here, uh, due to the magic of speed beacons. Uh, we could produce a third generation of these as well now, or probably instead of this one, because we are also we, we now have the wide area beacons, we have uh, better pr uh, assembly machines, and so on. Uh, but at the moment, that hasn't really been hasn't been a priority. So what's going? What, but what has happened down here is Tristan's come in and he's gone. Hang on a minute. Why are all these on tier two modules? So he's upgraded all of these to tier three modules. We're now so we're now using uh, we're getting uh, an extra boost out of the productivity here. Oh, so we're getting 32% extra free, and that's really good because glass and um, silicon are things that we seem to have been a bit short of, and rare metals we haven't had as much of as you'd expect. So having this recipe be a little bit more efficient is going to make a big difference to the amount of stuff we can produce. He's also upgraded the beacons to tier 3 modules, making the machines run a bit faster, to comp at least to compensate to an extent for, the, uh, for the, the additional slowdown you get from putting in the productivity modules. So this is probably relatively balanced, but now because we've got a bit of extra output, that means some of these machines on the end just are straight up not running, they're not needed anymore. We could probably get rid of, certainly get rid of this end block here, but I mean, there's no real need to. They aren't. They aren't causing any problems. They're just using a little bit of electricity and perhaps a little bit of UPS. Maybe that is a problem. But yeah, the, the system runs quite nicely over here. We should. I, I was going to say we should replace it with with one of these. I don't think there's any actual real need to do that because at the moment we have we have enough coming out. That oh no, we don't. 
we don't have enough coming out to completely fill this belt by the looks of it. So, I guess that means, that, yeah, there's not enough coming down this, but th this belt is full of the rough data substrates and of scrap that needs to be got rid of. This belt is very, very not full. So, we have two options here. We can upgrade this belt and use the extra production that's being done, uh, could be done by these machines over here, uh, in which case we will then probably have enough to fill up this belt down here. Or, we could rip out this production facility up here, replace it with a copy-paste of this one, or even go the next step up, use wide area beacons and tier 4 assembly machines, and uh, upgrade to that. We wouldn't gain any productivity boost from doing that, because the tier 4 assembly machines also take 4 productivity modules. They just run faster, so we'd need fewer machines, and we could use the bigger modules, so we'd need even fewer machines. We'd probably find that about 2 assembly machines was capable of filling a blue belt or something equally ridiculous. Um, so we might, yeah, we might be able to then sort of tweak this around a little bit and have it have it working in a slightly different way, maybe a bit more efficient, space efficiently, maybe a bit more UPS efficiently. Just getting a rather rather than having this huge sort of monstrosity up here that's been upgraded at least, well, it's been upgraded at least twice because I I put in more machines at one point and then we put in modules and yeah, it, it, it's not a great design anymore. This is a lovely t g g second generation de design, um, but it could easily be outclassed by a third generation design if we wanted to go in and, and replace it. Um, the thing is, though, this belt goes all the way from here, down the bus, and the down here, and then into the stations over here. And that means that it's absolute busiest, there is going to be a train over here which will fill up with, uh, with data card substrates. It's gone at the moment, so it's not even here at the moment. So now, any of those gaps can be filled up by the current production that's going on, and by the time the train gets back, the belts will be completely full, and I reckon there's enough on the belts going from all the way up here, down here, to fill up a complete train. And then in that time, and then when, once the train is gone, we can fill the belts back up again. So I don't think we actually need to improve the production at all. Uh, the uh, the limiting factor here is the is the logistics system bringing the uh, bring it down by belt all the way over to here to the train, and then shipping it up in the train. Those are the limiting factors rather than the speed of construction right now. So let's not worry about it. And hopefully, eventually, we'll get to the point where we've got enough of the uh, data, blank data card stockpile that this whole system can calm down a little bit and we don't need, we won't be needing to make new ones at quite the rate we are at the moment. In the same area, he's also done some upgrading of the uh, of the stations around here to move them over to using the single uh, warehouse design. So down here, we're getting out the rare metals, they're pouring up a load of yellow belts, which is a bit weird. I suppose it's one per wagon, and we don't need anything faster than yellow belts for this, really. Uh, all, then all pouring into a single warehouse up here. Same with the silicon. Same with the glass. He didn't finish off the iron because there was too much in the storage storage over here. Uh, presumably he's going to do that at some point. I, I I wouldn't like to say for sure. Let's have a look. So in, in here, what, how, how is this currently set up? This this one is unrestricted. These ones down here are also unrestricted. So they're being limited essentially by the signals down here. Oh, and by the... Yeah, we are trickling it slowly through up here. So this means that in a while, when this finally gets down to zero... Um, all of the iron will be up in here, and that'll make it nice and easy to rip out these um, these warehouses and then replace them with, uh, with with a system like this. I I don't like that these are yellow belts. I feel they should be at least blue because this is going to take a. I mean, yeah, it's fast enough to keep up with the rate we're using the stuff up over here. I, I think, but it's it's just going to take so long to unload the train. The train's going to end up being kidnapped for absolutely ages, uh, as has happened to this glass train. The glass train is emptying incredibly slowly. And so, while it's sitting here, it can't go off and do other things. So I think these should be upgraded. We'll probably do that next time. Uh, oh, and, yeah, and, and as I was discussing before, you can now see that we've now got more um, more substrates along here than we actually need. This belt is running not quite flat out, which is interesting. I was expecting... maybe No, maybe it is running flat out. Uh, and so now we, we've built up a little bit of a backlog. In the on the belts up here, and so we'll we can just pour, we can pour that through here. The train's obviously arrived again, but we we managed to fill the belts back up again, so we can just pour it into the train at a rate of one blue belt, which is okay, I suppose. Tristan's done a few other minor fixes around the base as well. So, for example, he's he's uh, simplified this graph over here, this graph system over here a little bit because um, I pointed out that one of the uh, w one row of uh, combinators that he put in across the top wasn't actually required. So he's removed those, which is is fine. Um, I'll be talking more about this in a in a, in a, in a how-to tutorial video that's going to come out in in probably a couple of weeks. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. 
Then over here, we've got the various different exotic uh, metals all being put onto the uh, onto, onto the um, system as well. So we can see here that we've got a, f a fairly good supply of beryllium. We have problems with holmium, iridium, and uh, and vita. This particular form of vita. Uh, whether we'll be adding in more forms of vita in the future, we shall see. But at the moment, though, yeah, at the moment, there's there's we're a bit short on the exotic materials. Uh, we're doing very very well for cryonite and vulcanite though. So that's that's nice. That's good to see. It's nice and nice to see that at least the uh, the first exotic materials are both are both doing really really well. He's also added glass to it as well because that was something that I was aware we were having possible problems with. I can't actually see the glass at the moment but I'm sure it's on here somewhere. Okay so yes we have we have massive glass problems at the moment as you can see by this completely empty column here uh, but you know that's something we can go in and sort out. The iron uh, I, we, I, we're aware of a, prob a slight shortage of iron ore. Uh, we have a plan to deal with that but I shall talk about that more later. Uh, it's not it's not pushed through to being an iron plate or an iron ingot problem yet, so we're not too worried about it. We are the, the mines we have are keeping up, but at the moment we are aware that we're pulling a lot of iron out of the ground on uh, on Norvis, and that's probably going to struggle at some point. Uh, rare metals a little bit low, but not crisis level, but a little bit low. Similarly, similarly with blue circuits as well. Maybe we should look into that at some point. Uh, science packs, well, we're you know we we will we'll build them up as we go. I'm actually. Okay, well, I was going to say I'm quite surprised we've got this many Astro, but no, it's the Astro 4 is the new one. That's the one we're short of still. So yeah, you can see we've got the um, the various the graph here shows all of the different all the different um, supplies resources that we are we're concerned about and gives us an idea of how much of them we've got. Moving back up into Norbit and over to the um, this sort of uh, space probe launching area for a little while, uh, I noticed that Tristan has also put in a um, a protection system. So with um, with rocket launches, if you keep launching the rocket um, without emptying it properly, eventually you start to lose um, lose the packs. And I've had this happen uh, on, from ground launch rockets in the past, and it feels very silly because you're spending an enormous quantity of resources to get quite literally nothing. And so Tristan's put in a system here that will monitor this belt here, and if the, if, it, if the belt is full, or if it's if there's okay, so it's adding what's on this belt over to, onto the what comes in from here. Uh, hmm. This doesn't feel quite right. So the object, the, the original one, before all of these, all this cabling was put in, the idea of this was to only pass the uh, satellites across here uh, when there was uh, a negative number being sent up from Norvis. And Norvis sends up a ne negative numbers that can be up to minus a thousand if it's run out of them completely. And so this is then being passed over to here. So this will only load when there's a negative number. Great. <clears throat> However, we don't want to lose anything that's been uh, produced accidentally. It's been produced, so we've got the then we've got these links along here that are monitoring what's on this belt. And if this belt is full, that means this is unloading solidly, and therefore we don't want to launch another another pro satellite probe just yet. However, if this is full, we're only going to get. 80 items showing on it, which is not going to be enough to offset the minus a thousand that's coming up from the ground. So we need to put in a times a hundred uh, multiplier in here or something like that in order to make sure that this can overrule the uh, signal that's coming up from the ground. I think Tristan probably thought there was just a minus one coming up from there. But that the reason for that is because if this if this doesn't unload quickly enough, perhaps because there's a problem with the train up here or the train is the train that comes up to here isn't moving often enough and it doesn't take them all and it doesn't take all of the um, the satellite telemetries away, we could then end up with it backing up all the way along this belt and Cause it and causing that problem. So yeah, that's gonna. It's a good idea, just not quite implemented properly. Probably because he didn't understand exactly how I'd implemented the previous part of the system. Over here on Big Red, Mark has hit an amazing milestone. So he's had the uh, the glaive beams wandering around on this planet for so long that he has now killed every single biter on the planet, and we've been able to mark it as um, as con as confirmed as we've confirmed hostile extinction on this planet. So that means there are no biters on here. He doesn't have to worry about them unless some come riding in on meteors. So generally pretty good. It's it's now it's now completely safe, and that means he spent some time then pulling up a lot of he, or he started pulling up some of the walls that were around the edges. He's not, not going to need to nuke it anymore and he can now just expand out to his heart's content. So he's going to be building out a load more um, yes, a, lo a load more uh, core mining drills, a load more of absolutely everything to, to improve the, uh, the flow of uh, Vita stuff that's coming in here. So that's that's great, and he's going to be carrying on with that in the in the next in the next stream, I believe. Somewhat similarly, out on Kothar, Mike has been making some improvement. Uh, so I talked about I talked last time about how he was having how he's having issues um, over here because the trains were getting stuck because there weren't enough mines for them to always be able to be ready to nip off to another one. So now he's put in some additional mines. So now the trains can just disappear from here as soon as they're, uh, they're as soon as they're empty. There should theoretically always be mines for them to go out to. Uh, at least that's the hope. And at the moment, it seems to be working. 
Possibly he still needs more mines because there is a big gap in the iridium uh, production going on here, but it, it, it's sort of mostly working because he's added in some extra mines to get the throughput up. And also, more importantly, he's added in a, added in a stacker station up here that will hold the trains when they're, um, when they're waiting to find a mine to go to. So, a train will, as we can see from this one, it'll go to an iridite pickup, so it'll pick up from the mine. It'll then go to the stacker to unload. It'll then go uh, to, to wait to unload. It'll then go to Urudite drop off to actually empty, and after that, it will then go to I stack out, where it'll then it can then which is down here, uh, where it can wait until it until there is a mine that's ready for it. So at any given to any given moment, there might be some trains waiting here. There aren't at the moment, so maybe um, <clears throat> I'd say maybe he needs some more trains, but maybe he doesn't. Let's see how long this one takes to actually leave again. So the train will pull in here like this, and it will stop at the station. And it will wait until there is a mine available. And okay, it left. It left pretty quickly. Um, I'd say that's probably the um, probably that one second of delay there. So this means he needs more trains. The, uh, the the mines are filling up. Ideally, there will always be at least one train waiting here, ready to go off to a mine when it becomes available, and or at least one train waiting and uh, trains waiting up here, ready to head down to the Irid iridium drop-off stacker. Now, in theory, he should have a train limit of two on this station. He does have a train limit of two on this station. We just don't have enough trains. Okay. Uh, well, we don't, we don't have enough throughput. So I think, yes, yeah, some more trains, probably more mines, and it'll help this It'll help this area a lot in order to get, and, and get everything running and flowing much more smoothly. But I think that's a relatively low priority at the moment because we do have a supply of Iridium coming through. There is some of it available. If we look in Norvis orbit in the spaceboard, okay, we, ha we have a train here that is not quite full. All right, maybe we, maybe we don't have quite enough Iridium at the moment. Uh, it needs a little bit of a boost, but it's getting... It's getting fairly close, I think. We're not doing we're not doing too badly with iridium production. Um, it still needs a bit more, but it's get, it definitely getting there. Additionally, as part of the improvement, I think he's pulled out some of the warehouses that were along here and maybe put maybe put in more belts as well, so we we can now empty the trains a lot quicker, and that means they're freed to go off to the next to go off to them back to the mines again sooner, and it means the next train can pull in sooner and do its unloading. And so this is he's removed some warehouses and he's streamlined and, and sped up the process of unloading the trains. So that's made a big difference. The biggest problem is that iridite only stacks up to ten, so a train load of it. It's not very much. It goes. It comes out very, very quickly and just disappears into the hungry, hungry maw of the factory. Uh, we did discuss add, uh, adding an upgrade on all of the mines to put in to put in the crushers over there, but I think Mike isn't keen to do that yet because it's going to mean quite a lot of upheaval, making the mines quite a lot more complicated, uh, handling the byproducts out on the mines as well. It's just just quite a lot, quite a lot to it. So he doesn't want to do a, just do a. Um, he, he doesn't want to go out and do that because it's not going to be that quick a job. So, but maybe maybe it'll be something we'll do later. And so that brings us to the end of the first video for this week. There's going to be some more coming out over, over, over the rest of the weekend. Don't worry about that. There'll be plenty of content for you to watch. Um, I hope yesterday's stream didn't come as too much of a surprise to you. Because yes, as, as, as I've been saying, we are shifting the calendar around a little bit now. And from next week... The, uh, the Factorio stream will start. Will be on Thursdays, the XCOM stream will be on Tuesdays, and the videos will come out at other times in, in, in and around then. I think one on Saturday and one on Monday probably, and with the miscellaneous videos coming out probably on Wednesday, but we'll see, we'll see where they seem to fit in most nicely. Uh, so yes, a bit of an upheaval there, sorry about that. It's going to be like this at least until January due to changes in my, in, in my normal life. But all the content will still carry on coming out, just on slightly different days. So I hope you'll still be able to join me for all of it, uh, as, as and when it happens. So, as you ever, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you um, tomorrow or the day after for the uh, for the next part of this video, and then on uh, Tuesday and Thursday for the streams. Thanks for watching, and bye bye.